Hello, Marcel here and I will show you the very basics of simulating hair and fur using Lucid Physics and Ornatrix for 3ds Max. We will keep things very simple and more specific scenarios will follow in future tutorials. So let me just start off by creating a sphere as we usually do and onto the sphere I'm going to add a hair groom using Ornatrix and I will use the default fur groom to just grow some basic hairs on top of the sphere. I will reduce the radius of the sphere a little bit so that we get a more even hair length. So once I have created this I'm just going to temporarily disable my hair from guides operator so we just see the guides. I'll select my hair and just remove the top two modifiers so we're down to the guides and then I will just use the lucid toolbar to add any kind of preset. It doesn't really matter which one you choose because we're simulating hair. So the lucid modifier is added on top of our guides and we get our usual lucid parameters inside the modifier panel. So this is it. Now if I click simulate and scrub the timeline we have our basic hair simulation already in place so let's see what kind of parameters we can control right off the bat so first of all let's tick the show as particles option on and see what lucid is actually simulating if I press simulate you can see that particles are generated along each strand and there are a lot of them so this results in a very smooth and detailed simulation for every strand we can control the size of these particles by adding a global flex settings object which I'm going to move to the side so we can select it separately and changing the resolution parameter here. In fact, this resolution parameter determines the number of particles that we will get along each strand. So right now it's set to 30 and if I change it for example to 20, we will get only 20 particles generated along each strand. And if I simulate it right now, the hairs already are behaving very differently. They are being a lot more springy. And in fact, the fewer particles you have along each strand, the more springy the hairs will be right off the bat. And this is just one way of controlling the rigidity or the flexibility of your strands is to increase or decrease the number of particles that you get along the length of it. So let me set this back to something like 25. And if I do that, the hairs are a little bit more flexible again. There is another way of controlling the flexibility of the hairs and that has to do with the hairs themselves. So if I go back into my Lucid modifier, which is applied on top of my guides, I can scroll down and see that there is a rigid stiffness parameter. Let me just uncheck the show as particles so we see our guides again. And this parameter is another way of controlling how much the simulation will preserve the shapes of your particles versus how much it will try to bend them. So so the lower the value here, the more flexible each strand will be. If I decrease this to 0.1, my strands will be five times more flexible. And if I increase this to a higher value like 0.8, you will see that they are becoming more springy. If you look through the tutorials in Lucid on rope physics, you can find all of the same parameters controlling the physics and the behavior of the ropes. And you can use that tutorial to find out what other things you can do to have a specific behavior coming from your hairs. So one other option for example you can use to control is the stiffness or the flexibility of your particles is to increase the spacing between them. Right now it's set to zero which means that the particles are going to be spaced right next to each other but if I set this option to something else like one and this value is the multiple of the radii of the particles you can see that the particles are more sparse and they are actually touching right now and if I simulate they will be again much more springy. So by combining these parameters you can change the behavior of of the hairs and get both the stability of the simulation and the look that you want in the final simulation. So I'm just going to set this back to the way it was before. Make sure that we have nice flowy hair. At this point I can always go back and I can modify something. So for example I can edit some of my guides and change their length, brush their shape or do some other stuff. And the next time I will simulate my scene this will update the shapes of the particles and they will be behaving appropriately. Moreover the placement of the strands themselves can vary if your mesh is deforming and the simulation will respect this fact. So to show this for example let me select my base sphere and add a simple FFD to it and I'm just going to animate this FFD stretching a little bit over the first five frames. So on frame number five I'm going to move it over here and if I just move the scrubber you can see that the hair follows this animation. Let me just decrease the number of overall frames we have to record to 40. So I just press record and as you see this 
stretching happens and it actually pulls the hair behind it. So this means that each hair respects the deformation of its underlying mesh. So for example, if you had a character which is running or something and the hairs were planted on its skin, the fur or the hair will follow the character's movements and you'll get a nice realistic effect. So let me go back to just having a static sphere. The next thing you might want to do is to have some collisions with your base object or with some other objects within the scene. This is very easy to do because the hair here is a part of our overall global lucid simulation. You can do all kinds of things. So for example, I can select my base sphere and I can add a convex collision to it. And this will mark it to be added into the simulation as a convex collision object. So if I simulate right now, the hairs will fall, but they will respect and not collide with this convex object. Let me just go back and turn off show as particles. And we can see that the hairs are now no longer colliding with our mesh. And in fact, I can now go and animate the position of my mesh. And just like before, without any problems, the hairs will follow and respect this animation at the same time. So I'll press record to record my animation. And when I play back, I can see that the hairs are following my mesh, but at the same time, they're not colliding with it. They're respecting this collision object. I'm just going to go back and decrease the rigid stiffness a little bit more so we get even more flowy hair. And now our hair behaves a little bit better if you're simulating something longer instead of fur. So with all of this in mind, just like before, you can go and use your normal Ornatrix operator. So for example, I can add my hair from guides on top of this to get my hair. Then maybe I can add some render settings to taper the hair and specify its width. And maybe I can go and increase the number of hairs I see inside the viewport. If I play back, you see that the hair is still animated and it still follows the recorded simulation that we have just created. And they can continue going and adding other things on top of this. Uh, for example, I can add guide clustering to create little clusters for all of my hairs. And I can add stuff like curling or frizz or any other parametric effect that you would want to have in a normal simulation. And in fact, I can always go back to my very bottom operator, which is the guides from surface operator. Then I can increase the guide length to make the guides longer and maybe change the number of points per each guide to make them a little bit more detailed. And once I'm happy with everything, I can always go back to my Lucid modifier and then I can re-simulate my hair again with these updated parameters. And once I have re-simulated, I'm just going to turn on the show end result and we see the updated simulation happening in real time. And really due to the speed of the Lucid simulation, all of this happens in seconds, sometimes even quicker than the playback speed. Of course, as I mentioned before, this is all part of the Lucid simulation. So you can always go back and add forces in to this simulation. So for example, I can add a wind force that's going to blow onto our hair. And then I just need to bind this force into our hair. I'll change the wind speed and add some turbulence to the wind. So once we're simulating, we see that the wind is actually blowing our hair. And as I play back my recorded simulation, the wind is now captured and it is part of our hair animation. And as I mentioned before, we can always keep adding more things into our simulated scene. So in this case, for example, I added a collision floor into the scene, which is made of a polygonal plane with a static collision body type specified for it. And our animated hair will respect this collision object and sort of brush alongside it without penetrating our floor. So this just shows the power of having your hair simulated within an existing Lucid universe, where you can add all kinds of different effects that Lucid already supports, in addition to using the power of Ornatrix parametric hair stack to create hair effects. I hope you found this tutorial useful and that you can use it to your advantage. Thank you very much for watching.